Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another out and about video and as you can probably tell behind me the weather it's not been too kind to us didn't have this in mind when we um, we plan to do this video today and today's story it takes us back to July of all months a complete contrast to where we are today in December and obviously the snowy weather but we're going to tell the tale of a 62 year old lady called Rachel Kay who sadly passed away in July 1912. <laughs> So today's story takes us back to July the 27th, 1912, and to the tale of Rachel Kay, who was a 62-year-old single woman. Now, she lived here in Helmshore at number 174 Holcombe Road, which is just where that bit of space is, if you will, between the houses and the stone steps. Um, but there used to be a row of houses here, and we think 174 used to be somewhere along here. But it was back, like I said, on the 27th, which was a Saturday, 1912. And Rachel, she was, um, I think she was a spinner. She was one of the weavers at one of the mills in that direction. Now, we're not sure if it was middle mill or higher mill where she worked, but it was definitely in one of those two mills. Now, she'd been working on the Friday evening before on the 26th and everything seemed fine. She was fit, she was healthy at this point. But we do know that um, Rachel did suffer from heart problems for about 20 years of her life so from the age of 40 on which she did have some issues with her heart but like I said she had been having several months many months leading up to her death where she seemed fit and healthy which made a change in her life now it was around about quarter past six on the Saturday morning she took a small pot small parcel with her and we think it must have been just some small belongings to take with her to Southport. She was making her way to Southport on the train from Helmshore Station and she was going to spend a full week over in Southport just to relax and to take in the holidays. Um, unfortunately she wouldn't get there because as she passed by Middle Mill, which is just further in that direction, she started to struggle. She seemed out of breath. She was sweating a lot. She looked like basically she was on the verge of collapsing. And there was a guy called Thomas who was literally stood outside of middle mill having a cigarette as she walked past as rachel walked past and he said to rachel come in take a seat take a breather you know and get your breath back before you continue on your journey now thomas has nipped inside he's come out with a chair and a small glass of brandy now rachel has taken a couple of sips of this brandy before sadly passing away now as we make our way down holcombe road obviously in this direction there used to be a few houses on the left hand side around about here they're obviously no longer here they've not been here for many years but we believe this is where rachel and her sister alice used to live at number 174 and i'll put an os map over the top now to show you guys exactly what i mean now, it's hard to imagine but i believe that this these set of steps here would have been here at the time when Rachel would have been alive. Um, like I said, these would have been the mill cottages just here. So I'm presuming these flights of steps, these stone stairs or steps, they would have been here all those years ago. So these are original and ones that Rachel and her sister Alice and her daughter Margaret probably would have walked down at some point during the 1900s. But we'll take a walk down and we'll see if we can find any remnants of where Rachel's house would have been.
So at the bottom of those steps, we can only imagine what it would have once looked like. There probably would have been a tall wall, high wall for the outer, outer background of the house, maybe. But yeah, um, it is hard to imagine, but like I keep saying, but there would have been a row of houses going all the way across there where Rachel once lived. And it is hard to, to, to picture it right now. Now we've just had a quick look at the notes, and it wasn't a guy called Thomas who, uh, who stopped Rachel in the tracks, it was a guy called Walter Howarth, and he lived in Townsend Street in Aslindon, but he was a weaver at Middle Mill. And like I said, it was Walter who'd seen Rachel walking past and told her to take a seat because he saw that she was, she was struggling. So like I said, he's gone in, he's got a chair, she's come out, it, it, sorry, he's come out with a glass of whiskey, and she's taken a couple of sips of this before she's passed away. It was absolutely bizarre at the time, because like I said, she was fitting healthy up to that point. Now, obviously the police were involved, they had to come down and check the body out and an autopsy took place later on. And I think it was on the Monday the inquest took place into the death of Rachel Kay. Now her sister Alice had come forward and explain that her sister, she lived with her sister and that she was fit and healthy never showed any signs of being in danger with her heart like she were for the previous 20 years and for the last few months she'd lived a normal life she was going to work on time, she was a good worker she worked hard but leading up to her death she was also becoming extremely excited and agitated because she couldn't wait to go on holiday and spend a week in, over in Southport. Now the autopsy didn't find anything untoward with Rachel's heart and they simply put it down, death, from excitement. Now I've never heard of that saying before, I've, I've heard of people dying from broken hearts but I've never actually heard of a case of somebody dying from excitement so we can only assume that perhaps she suffered from a tragic heart attack on that morning when she sadly passed away. Now this is only an extremely short story because like I said there's not much information out there on Rachel herself on and her life but like I said we do know that she had a daughter called Margaret Anne who we can't find any details of the father we can't find the information if Rachel was married, I don't think she was, but when she passed away at the age of 62, she also left behind her daughter. Now her daughter in the 1911 census records wasn't living with Rachel or the sister Alice. We don't know where she was living, but we do know that uh, Margaret was involved in something which involved the police because she was arrested and uh, she ended up with a criminal conviction. We've got a small a very small article that we've come across but we can't enlarge it enough to read exactly what she was convicted for and we can't find anything in the press either but it seems that um, at some stage in life Margaret did indeed fall foul of the law and spent time behind bars but it's, uh, it's another tragic story is this from Helmshore our neck of the woods the weather's put a dampener on pretty much a bit more of the story because this places we can't really get to and we're really struggling to find the grave uh, we think we found the location where Rachel is interred, but till the snow goes, we can't actually, you know, be 100% conclusive of that, if you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very quick video, this one today, but, but we just thought we'd bring you guys another tale from our local past here in Helmshore. And if you did like it, don't forget to, uh, as I always say, comment down below and subscribe to the channel for more videos as and when they're coming out, because obviously, if you subscribe, you will see them in your notification feeds. And as I said at the start of this video, we never anticipated this much snow to fall here in Haslingdon today. Um, obviously it's December, 
we should expect weather like this but yeah i mean from all accounts we were supposed to expect a flurry but as you can clearly tell and see from the video it's come down quite heavily now while we're here we'll take advantage of some of the weather for some for some shots and we'll look at some headstones as well but this one we've just come across i've never seen it before so i've been at this this cemetery in this graveyard for many times but sweet remembrance of Thomas Howard, beloved son of Thomas and Cecilia Mullaney, died June 12th, 1936, aged nine years. O oh, Jesus, open wide thine heart and let him rest therein, I think it says. So we think we've narrowed um, Rachel's grave to somewhere in this region here. Um, going off the headstones, you've got one there, which I think is 963. So she's definitely on this row or this row, possibly this row in this this region. Um, Lewis is now trying to take the snow off the headstones to find out. But yeah, we feel that she's definitely here and this is where Rachel's story sadly comes to an end she was buried here just two days after her death like I said on July the 27th 1912 but she did have a daughter called Margaret but very little is known of Margaret other than we do know that she was jailed or imprisoned I should say for something we don't know what because the information is very scarce um, but yeah, at the time, she, um, when Rachel died, she was living at 172 Holcombe Road with her sister, Alice. And like I said, I think this is a final resting place just round about here. So after the inquest on Monday the 29th of July 1912, Rachel's body was interred at Haslinden Cemetery on Tuesday the 30th of July 1912. Uh, and it was only a small ceremony, uh, but nevertheless she was interred just further up the road from where she lived. Um, now, like I said, you've probably seen snippets by now, depending on how I've put this video together. We've tried to locate Rachel's final resting place, but we've proved unsuccessful yet again. We're going to put it down to the snow this time because we do feel like we did find roughly where her, her grave is based on headstone numbers close by. But like I said, the snow's made it a bit more difficult, so yeah. But yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a truly tragic story. It's another local one from here and it's something a little bit more different and a little bit bizarre. Um, if we go off just what the inquest said and that she died of excitement. I mean, really, um, like I said, reading between lines, it was more likely heart failure. I mean, we know she struggled with 20 years of heart issues. She regularly visited doctors, but in that year alone, 1912, she never saw the doctor from February onwards until obviously she passed away. She hadn't seen the doctor, I should say. So yeah, so there's definitely issues there with the heart. And to me, it looks like it was definitely heart failure at the end of the day. But imagine, you know, you're excited to go to Southport for a week's holiday. You've you've worked, you know, we all get excited, don't we? Especially like now, this time of year in December, we're getting excited because in two weeks' time we're off work for a week. You do get giddy, you do get excited, and you want these breaks. These this is why people work long hours to save up and to have money for holidays. And in poor Rachel's case, she never got to take that holiday. So that's it from Helmshore on this snowy afternoon. As you always say at the end of these videos, if you did like it, don't forget to give us a comment, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to give us a like. Now, we will be back soon with another tale from our past. We're not sure when that's going to be because Christmas is only two weeks away. We do have a couple more stories we do want to cover over the Christmas period. But, like I said, if the weather continues as it is, 
we don't know when then will be coming so please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification icon because then you will be notified when we do upload a new story but in the meantime as we always say take care look after yourselves and we will be back soon with another tale from our past